Hello, hello, and welcome back to Create Astral, where last episode we got ourselves set up a nice little deep slate farm to help us get some more ores. Crushing deep slate with these crushing wheels here will give us a chance at any one of these items here. Uh, we can get ores and some redstone and lapis, which is always going to be nice. This thing has been running pretty smoothly since I last saw you, and so far we have gotten one coal. We're going to fix this today, and I think the only way we're going to do that is to scrap this whole thing and start over. This is because someone actually brought to my attention that Deep Sleep can be mined uh, with a cobblestone generator, uh, but you have to do it at below zero. So instead of having this whole complicated setup to make Deep Slate, uh, we're just going to do that instead. Now, we're going to be moving our entire setup down to below zero here. If we set up a cobblestone generator down here, we should see that it produces Deep Slate, which is exactly what we want. We're going to be digging out a nice big area here, uh, just so we have room to work with. Now, to actually build what I have planned, we're going to be using a schematic here. Uh, so the first thing we'll need to pick up is the schematic cannon. There we are. And we'll also need to pick up the schematic table and an empty schematic, which is just some paper and light blue dye. Super easy. Now the design I'm going to use for this is a design by FireL in the Create Astral Discord server. I'll put a link down in the description of the video to that. So in our schematic table here, I've gone ahead and put that file into the schematics folder in the actual mod pack folder itself. All we need to do is put our empty schematic here and click the check mark button and it should upload it. There we go. And now if we hold out our schematic, we get a nice little box here. We can right click and it will show us a ghost of the schematic just so we can see what it looks like and where it will go. I've counted it out and this thing is 13 blocks wide in each direction and 11 blocks tall so that's the area we'll need to dig out down below. Here we are and I've got a nice big area dug out here. Now we can just place our schematic down right here and it should fit perfectly there. Now we'll need to take our schematic cannon and place that down here. We'll put a chest next to it and this is where it's going to grab all the items it needs from. Inside here we can throw down our schematic and then we'll put some gunpowder up in the top left for fuel. And then we'll need a book and this will go right here. And this will give us a material checklist and this is just going to tell us all the stuff that it needs in order to build this thing. And now with all of these materials, we can just place them into a chest next to the schematic cannon. And if we hit the play button on this, maybe? Yep, there we go. We should see it start placing all the blocks. And this is our finished product here. All we need to do now is go through and add lava into each of these middle sections here. So one there, and then one more on this side. We'll need to do that to the other layer too, but we'll also need to put water in all of these stairs. Now, to get this thing actually working, I've got a mechanical bearing here, and we're just going to throw that right on top. And then I'm going to use a windmill just for now until we get a better power source for this, because we definitely want this to be running at the max speed we can. Uh, but a windmill is going to have to do for now. 
And before we turn this on, we want to add a storage source for this. I've just got an item vault here. We can just throw on like that and make sure we attach it with super glue. And then off the side here, we'll also want to add some linear chassis. We can squeeze by. We want to add this all the way out to the edge. And then out here, I'm going to throw down one of these portable storage interfaces. And then we'll put one one block away from that too. I'm going to have a chute coming out of this. And then this is going to go straight into another item vault where we're going to be storing all of our deep slate. And then we'll want to throw an andesite funnel on that and make sure it's facing into the uh, item vault itself. And now that should be everything we need. We just need to get up here and right click this mechanical bearing so it starts turning. There we go. And this is actually running way, way slower than I wanted it to. Uh, so we're just going to come through and add one of these rotational speed controllers. If I can get up here. Here we go. And it's a little, little messy, but I think I've got it working now. We should just be able to turn this on. And I've got it set up so that this rotational speed controller is coming out of the windmill. And we should be able to crank up the speed on this just a little bit. Let's see how fast we can go here. Oh, looks like we can go at max speed with the <laughs> with the windmill that we have. <laughs> this is um Well this is what we wanted, which is good. If I can get out of here now that would be awesome. Alright, let's see if we can do this. Yep, okay. Let's just okay, let's Oh, and I forgot to attach the portable storage interface over there. That's why it's not connecting. Let's fix that. Maybe. Oh my goodness, what is happening? This feels bad. Yep. I think we may need to put some hazard tape around here or something. This is... This is not safe. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's happening again. How do I get out? Okay. Um it, this could be worse. I don't I don't really know what to do here. Okay, I think if I break this, I can get out. We're getting somewhere. Yeah, there we go. There we go, and now we've got it connected up so that it is spitting all of the deep slate into this item vault here. Now, I think it would be cool to see how much uh, deep slate we actually have in that item vault down there. So I'm going to craft up a whole bunch of these display boards. We just need a little bit of andesite. Then we'll also need one of these display links, and we'll also need a content observer. All we have to do is throw our display boards onto the side of this item vault. Actually, you can just place these wherever. As long as you have your content observer facing into the item vault. And then we just need to right click the display board and put it on top of the content observer. We can just change our display link to show the amount of matching items. Here we go. And if we attach power to this, we should see it display a big number here. There we go. And we can actually go into our display link here and add a label to this. So we can just say, hey, we have uh, this amount of deep slate. There we go. Turn down the volume on that just for now. It was very, very, still very loud. So as you can see right now, we have about almost 15,000 deep slate here. And I think that the current item vault size we have, which is three by five, can hold up to 57,000. But what do we do with 57,000 deep slate? Well, for starters, we can have them come out into a couple sets of crushing wheels here. I'm hoping that three will be enough to handle all this. Plus, it just lines up nicely with the size of our item vault. Then we're going to have all of the items that come out of this onto a belt. Crushing deep slate is going to give us two different types of items. All of these raw ores can be crushed again and then washed to give us nuggets. And then we'll get a couple of extra items here like lapis, redstone, and coal. So we'll need to filter those out at the end of this belt here. Uh, and now that we have access to brass, we can actually use brass funnels, which have a filter slot. We can put these onto the side of these barrels here. 
And then in these filter slots, we can use these actual filters. We can set these to only hold a specific item or items. So we want one of these filters to hold raw iron, raw copper, raw gold, and raw zinc, and raw tin. We could just slap that onto the filter slot. Then in the other one, we'll want to throw redstone, lapis, and coal. Just like that, and then we can put that on there. Now if we attach power to these wheels and add some chutes coming out of the vault here, we'll see all of those start to get processed. We'll need to power this belt too. There we go, and then all of the items that come out of this are going to go straight into these barrels. And we can already see we've got some items coming through, which is very nice and definitely much faster than the one we had going before. With all of our raw ores, we want those to go straight into another set of crushing wheels here. And this will crush them into crushed versions of the ores, and then we can wash those to get nuggets. So we want everything coming out of these crushing wheels to go straight onto a depot. And this is where we'll have a fan blowing water onto these. Now before we start throwing items onto this depot to get washed, we'll want to make sure we set a filter on this. We're going to use another brass funnel so we can add a specific filter. Otherwise, all of the items that come out on to this depot are just going to throw straight out unless we use a filter. All of these washing recipes have side products that it can produce, uh, so it would be very hard to set a filter to only allow those items. So instead we're going to add a deny list and just have all of these crushed ores. And this is going to make our filter much, much simpler. So we can just have those, and now they won't drop straight out. And everything except those will come out onto this belt. Then after all of these items are coming out, we'll need another set of brass funnels. One of these filters, we're going to have to set to all the different types of nuggets we can get out of this. So that's uh, gold, iron, copper, zinc, and tin. Then we can just throw that on there. And then technically this one does not need a filter because uh, it's just going to be all of the byproducts that are coming out of the ore washing. So yeah, now we should be safe to add power to all this. Then all we need to do is add a chute coming out of this raw ore barrel here. And we should start to see lots of nuggets and extra items coming through. All of these nuggets we're going to want to throw onto another belt here, uh, just like this. And we're going to have those go into a basin, and we're going to put a mechanical press above this. And we're gonna, this is going to allow us to press these into actual ingots. So I want to add a brass funnel on the back of this, and we want to set this to only output 9 items at a time. And so this will set it so that if there's, say, only one tin nugget, it won't spit it out, and it won't get stuck in this basin. That way you won't have a whole combination of different nuggets in your basin and they won't get stuck in there. And then out of this basin we're going to have another belt coming straight forward. This is going to go right alongside another belt coming out of this barrel. Basically we just want all of these items going into the same place. Then we can also have another belt coming out of this barrel up here which is holding our coal, lapis, and redstone. And luckily for us this lines up perfectly with our other two belts which was completely intentional. Yeah, so all of these items are going to be going into the same place, which is a vault at the end of the road. And I've set this up to be the same size as the one up there, just for symmetry's sake. We'll just attach some more andesite funnels onto the side of this to have all the items go in. Then I believe we just need to power these belts and we should be good to go. And with all those belts powered up, we have all of our items going into the item vault now. On the opposite side of this item vault, I'm going to throw down a bunch of these crude storage units. And then on these, we can set these to auto import from the back, just so we can have those items come straight out of the item vault and into these instead to separate them out. We'll have to add a few more than these though. I'm not sure uh, exactly how many items are coming out of this. But already this is working so much better than the one we had up top. Uh, we definitely have more items than just one piece of coal. But of course, we can't leave this machine laying bare like this. It would be a disgrace not to decorate this place. I'm gonna use a whole bunch of these glowing iron pillars here. Uh, I think these look really cool and they help highlight specific areas. I may or may not have stolen these from a village on the moon. You know what, maybe, maybe repurposed is a good word. Yeah, I, I, we're repurposing them. 
I'm also going to use them around these crude storage units down here. And I'm going to throw down some of these moonstone bricks. I think these look really, really cool. I've also got these normal iron pillars here, which is another Ad Astra block. We've done quite a bit of decorating here, and I'm definitely not finished, but you can get a pretty good idea of where we're taking this. I've also thrown in one of these very cool iron sliding doors. These just look so awesome. While we've been building, our machine here has been hard at work, and we've gotten way more ores than I thought we were going to. Which isn't a bad thing, it's just definitely better than one coal. We've also accumulated quite a lot of deep slate. I had to speed up our whole machine down here just to keep up with it so that we don't overflow. But yeah, I think we're in a pretty good place now material-wise. Uh, we're definitely going to be making good use of all of these ingots and other materials we have now. But I think that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.